OK, so I've reached the site of Northorpe Station. And actually, there was two Northorpe stations. And I'll explain that to you in a minute. But it's just started raining again, so I've had to put the hood up. But just behind me is a bridge across the road here. Now, the two stations actually moved to, the, to a different side of the bridge, basically. So you had the original... I'll point you around and show you. So there's the bridge across the road. You had the original Northorpe station on this side here. And then in 1921, this station was made out of wood. It caught fire and burned down. And we've got some pictures to show you of that in a minute. And I'm going to show you the, a picture of the steps and the actual building after it burnt down. Then they rebuilt the station on that side over there. Now, this station was known when it was rebuilt as Northorpe Higher Station because there was another one on the L and Y line, which is just down the hill down there, called Northorpe Lower Station. This was Northorpe Higher, and that one was just known as Northorpe before it burnt down. But anyway, let's go explore, and I'm going to show you this uh, building as it was burnt down. It's just while we're here, we've got another guest with us. This is Alan, everybody. He's going to tag along and show us what's left of this stretch here. But Richie's just pointed out, we've got some more railings here. Again, these are original. You can tell. And then we're going to head down here to what remains of some steps that went up to the station. And the picture that I'm going to show you of these steps is going to show you after the station burnt down. And I'm going to show you this picture now. And you can clearly see the old staircase heading up towards the station. And on that picture, you can see the charred remains of Northorpe Station at the top. Now, what we're looking for in these trees is the remain of the concrete base. Because Richie said when he came here, a couple of years ago it was here now we think it might be under the ivy here we're not 100 percent sure let me stand on it it's pretty solid under there but there's no guarantees but that might have been the base of the stairs where it turned up the hill and headed up there towards the station as you can see it's well overgrown now trees everywhere you are talking 100 years ago now exactly when it burnt down Right, we stood on top of the bridge now, as you can see. So there would have been the site of the new Northorpe station. And as you can see, it's now built on with housing. So unfortunately, there's nothing left up there whatsoever. And the side that we're on now is where the wooden station was that burnt down exactly 100 years ago. And if you look down there, Rich has just said, those red houses in the background there, probably only 300 yards away. That's where the old L and Y line ran through Murfield as well. So you can see how close they were to each other. So we're making our way across the site of what was Northorpe Station. So you would have had the platforms, or the, the tracks, sorry, in the middle there. And the station was on stilts, slightly higher at platform level. So you would have had wooden stilts here coming down. Now we're walking this way along the embankment. And as we're going through, I'm trying to keep my eyes peeled for any foundations or anything that may be left here. But it's not looking good. It's all heavily wooded now. Overgrown, lots of brambles, lots of ivy, which unfortunately covers anything that might remain, as you can see. But anyway, we're going to head on further up now on this embankment, which you can see slopes off down there. And we're heading up to what is known as the Ponderosa uh, Petting Zoo, or Ponderosa Zoo, as it is today. And the site used to run through there. And there was quite a few railway crossings between here and there as well. Right, so we're heading across the embankment and we've reached our first uh, find here. Now it appears to be on the old maps as an old underpass, like a farmer's underpass from one field to the other. Now I'm a bit precarious about standing on the edge of here, but as you can see, you've got the old topper there, the old uh, abutment end, and you can see the curved wall structure there. But again, it's the blue gray brick again. Now I'm going to try leaning you over just to show you. Hopefully you can see that. I have no idea what you're seeing. But that's all that's left of that. So we're going to push on and keep heading up. Right, so we've reached the end of the embankment as far as we can go here. We've got what remains of a bridge. Now this is dual lane. And you can see the abutment there, and also the left one here, or what's left of it anyway. 
and uh, the embankment ends here. So what we're going to do is we're going to head down there and then make our way up the side here to rejoin the track bed further up. Okay, so we've made our way across this field here. So the line would have headed towards us here, across here, through these trees. And what you can see is a lovely picturesque valley here. And our Richard was just saying as well that this section here would have been a nice rural section from Murfield and onwards up to Heckmanwike. But you can see how rural it is and how beautiful it is. But we're going to try pick up the track bed just a bit further down here. And uh, if we find anything, I'll get back to you on the camera. So we've just made our way along this embankment here and we're probably 15 feet above the ground now. And we're heading down in that direction. Now just ahead down there, the uh, new line at this level would have crossed the L and Y as it heads through the valley here and approaches from our right and then it would have gone underneath the Leeds new line a bit further up. But I'll show you that when we're up there. But just down here is what is known as the Ponderosa Zoo. Uh, it's now like a kid's adventure park and uh, petting zoo, that kind of thing. But they've taken over some of the site around here. So we're making our way down this public footpath down the back of it. And let's see what remains a bit further up. So we're making our way up the access road for the Ponderosa Zoo that I was talking about back there. And it's hard to imagine because of the topography here now, it's completely different. But on our left, we think, well, we know the Leeds New Line was to our left. Uh, it would have kept its level when we were on the embankment, but now there's a giant hill to our left. So there's obviously been a lot of earthwork around here. There used to be a colliery on our right as well, and also a road bridge over here somewhere. And we keep seeing lots of stonework in the edge here. So there's obviously been a lot of earthwork gone on between, you know, since it closed around this area. And this road that we're walking on now is, is pretty new. So I would imagine it's been smashed to pieces and totally re-landscaped. But it's hard to imagine that where we are now, and I'll turn you around, to our right over there, we would have had the L and Y line running alongside us just down there which he said is the Murfield branch as you call it yeah. the L and Y Murfield branch on our right and the Leeds new line would have been just there on our left so we're walking right in the middle of two railway lines that no longer exist right so we've reached the junction now at this point here where the L and Y crossed underneath the Leeds new line or the Leeds new line crossed over the L and Y but again we just can't get our heads around how it looked I mean I'll show you behind we think the uh, Leeds New Line came towards us here on this road level, but then it, it rises up now. So we're not sure if that hill appeared or whether it was up at that level. We think it might have been this level. Now there was a colliery here, like I say, so that could have been mine workings like spoil heaps and things that have been piled up there, hence why it looks different. But if we look down here, the Leeds New Line would have continued straight ahead towards them trees somewhere over there probably at this level and then you had the uh, L and Y line the Dewsbury line as Richie said sorry the Cleck Eaton branch he said <laughs> not the Dewsbury Cleck Eaton um, there's that many lines in this area I'm getting confused the Cleck Eaton branch would have run from our right over here and underneath the Leeds new line and off that way so what you're seeing there is what remains of the L and Y so we've got two abandoned lines right here there is another one further up as well which I'll show you Again, but you can just see right in front of us an old, and I'm going to say it again, an abutment right in front of us. So this would have been from the old crossing point. I'll get you a bit closer. You can see bits of the ironwork remaining up there. This is what remains of the abutment as it would have crossed over. So the Leeds new line would have been up there at the road level, like I said originally. And the uh, L and Y line came from this direction, underneath, and I'm presuming in that direction. So this would have been the old track bed, somewhere here. And the L and Y, the, sorry, the Leeds new line would have crossed right over our heads. So I'm just looking on the other side of the road for any abutment remains on this side, and we can't see anything. But what we have found uh, is another set of iron railings and some concrete posts, which are always a good sign. And it looks like a railway sleeper down there. But this looks original, this footpath here. So this maybe went down to the track level here and crossed. Uh, but yeah, you can see the old iron railings yet again. 
as Richie keeps saying, there's tons of that along this route. But there's old uh, stone blocks and things in the trees here, so the abutment for the other side would have obviously been somewhere around here. Right, so I've just clambered up the banking. I want to get a bit closer to this abutment. It's not often I get so close to them. There you can see the grey stonework again, or brickwork, and there the top of the bridge up there. And some old ironwork here, which would have probably attached to the girder section that ran across there to the other side. So yes, the Leeds New Line was somewhere on this side here. So obviously there's now an access road to the Ponderosa Zoo. So that's gone. And I've just had it confirmed, this definitely was the route where this road is now of the LMY, the Cleck Eaton branch line. Now a bit further up, along here, there would have been another railway crossing on the other LMY line, which I'll explain to you a bit further up. And I've just made it down the other side of the abutment and for some reason, this is well and truly fenced off. Even barbed wire in the gap here. I wonder why that is. There's a lot of storage on top of the viaduct up there. I wonder if it's something to do with that. But you can see the walls of the viaduct there, or the uh, abutments. Right, so we've reached Smithies Lane, which is just here. And now we're at the back end of the large embankment that carried the, where we were back, it's hard to explain, but when we were back there, where the line crossed the LMY, it then went onto the uh, embankment. This is where it ends here. The embankment that is. Then it would have hit another bridge here, or a viaduct, and spanned right across the valley there. Now this is the River Spen, or the Spen Beck, as the locals call it, down here in the valley. So we would, we would have had a big viaduct across here. Now I'll try dig out a picture for you to show you that. But it had some stone pillars, or brick pillars, spanning across the valley here, right to the other side, where it hit a large embankment on that side. And then beyond that, it then hit another uh, viaduct, shall we say, across the L and Y line, which is the second section further up there. So the other L and Y line that it crossed further up was known as the Low Moor line or the Low Moor branch. There's that many bloody lines around here, I've lost track altogether. You railway a lot will be loving this. But anyway, look how high this uh, viaduct wall is here. As you can see, Pretty good condition again, but the blue grey brick, not like the Leeds ones that are all red brick. This is a distinctive colour. But yeah, you can see where it would have spanned across the valley there. Right, so we've reached the far side of the viaduct that spanned across the valley where the River Spen was. And we're now up on the ledge where the viaduct, where we're level with the top of the line now, so we're at track level. Now the line would have come from my left over here, just behind us, and headed straight towards the camera and onwards that way, towards the green building in the distance. Now just down there in that ditch is the LMY, the Low Moor branch line. We, that's what we're calling it. We're going with that. So the LMY Low Moor branch is just down there. Uh, so again, the Leeds New Line would have crossed over that line on a bridge and headed off that way where it banked left to go under the road ahead, which we'll head up to shortly. Right, we've made our way down here and we're now on the LMY track bed, as you can see in both directions. So this, like I said, is the Low Moor branch LMY. And then the New line would have crossed just in front of us up here on a bridge and headed that way. So we're now heading, well we've just spotted some stone down here, possibly bridge blocks, we don't know. We're going to head round here and hopefully pick up the new line a bit further up and uh, some railway sleepers in front of us, looks like it anyway. Right, we're just heading up towards the Walkley Lane road bridge which is there and you can see right here we're on the track bed of the Leeds new line and this bit it's pretty much intact. And this is the start of the Heckman White cutting. Now you railway lot out there will know exactly what I'm talking about. It spans through Heckman White in a cutting and wiggles its way through the town centre 
under many, many bridges, which we're going to see in this video. Uh, there's another bridge on this side. I'm told there was some sidings that came down from the Leeds New Line and into there where there were just a couple of storage units and things. So we're just headed through into the Heckman White Cutting. And as you can see here, and we're right underneath the bridge, uh, a newer steel bridge there. But this is the old railway bridge. And uh, Richard was just saying, and Alan, that apparently there's plans in place to, or the, the submitting plans to fill this cutting in with toxic rubbish, so we believe. And then hopefully, well, I'll say hopefully, they're going to build houses on top of it eventually. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't like the sound of that. So if you fancy opposing that, get online and do some research and uh, submit your uh, opposition to that plan. We're just making our way through the cutting that's under threat. <laughs> Look at all this ballast piled up here. Obviously just scooped it all up. There's a couple of concrete posts down there. And uh, yeah, we're walking on this ballast path here. It's quite a nice deep cut in this. Some deep sides on it. And we're heading up now towards Heckman Wyke and a bridge just further up here. So we're heading through the railway cutting and it currently resembles the mangroves on the Amazon. <laughs> it's very swampy down here. There's a lot of water ingress from the sides and you can just see an original wall through there. But we're currently still on the track bed and about to hit a bridge ahead. You can see the original wall through there just in the back there. So you'd have had double track down here. And then just out of these trees, these saplings, emerges a beautifully intact railway bridge. Now that to me looks like it's had some work done. So right above our heads we've got Brunswick Street and we're going to head on through there and you can see another bridge further on. Look at the amount of rubbish down here, it's just disgusting. The amount of fly tipping. That is just horrendous. And up there, that's horrible. So we're at bridge number two in the cutting. Here's Church Street above here, and as you can see there's a short stretch of a tunnel just approach appearing ahead there. Now that is roughly where the station would have been, which we'll talk about when we get down there. But again, another beautifully intact bridge, spoiled by all this rubbish dumped down here. And uh, like I was saying earlier, they want to fill this cutting in all the way from that bridge down. And uh, this would make a really good cycle route through to the existing cycle route that's further up. You could join this with the Greenway further up. It's just a shame, I don't know why they don't do it. It's all just going to be filled in and wasted. You've got the Greenway down the bottom and up there they could just join it through. I can imagine in summer this would be really nice. All right we're about to approach a short tunnel here. Now I say a tunnel because it's longer than a bridge and just at the other side of this tunnel would have immediately been the Heckman Wyke Spen station. Now I asked Richard the question, why are all the stations on this line, or most of them, called Spen? Now basically, if there was somewhere like Heckman Wyke that had two stations already, or had a station already, this being the second one, the newer one, had to have this Spen added on just to separate it from the other Heckman Wyke station. That's the story anyway. I did question that because I wondered why there were spen on here. But I mean, I wasn't expecting many tunnels on this line, but how nice is that? So we just uh, stumbled across some of these recesses. There's uh, two of them, I can see. One on either side. There's one there, obviously. And one on the far side. No, there isn't one on that side. That's strange. Further up though, so there's three recesses in here. You can see the old ballast is still down there. And a bike. <laughs> and uh, still got the soot marks on the roof, as you can see there, look. I love stuff like that. Yeah. And they want to fill this, well, they want to 
get rid of this, but Richard was just telling me a story about when they built the houses up there on the other side of this tunnel. Because the tunnel is actually, is it owned by Sustrans, you say? It's owned by Sustrans and uh, they're not allowed to cover it in or fill it in, so. Path to nowhere, as he says. So as you can see, part of the house sticks out over the tunnel, which is very weird. And, uh, and then the pathway heads out on that side. What you can see there as well as steps. Just spotted these as well in the wall. Some little uh, bricked up archways. There's one on both sides. Both sides there, there's one over there. Now these look like culverts of some sort or a drain of some sort. 